Round on the drums. <laughs> It was meant to be uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, but it all got a bit weird. <coughs> okay, let's start with commissions. James A. Hey? James A. Hey? James, I'm going to pull it out. Oh, don't want to make you pregnant. Oh, can I withdraw? <laughs> Have you got your nappies on? I don't know where it comes from, but I really don't. It, it, it's just there. <laughs> Eddie James, eh? You know, I just don't know. It's, it's weird, isn't it? It's it's classic meets contemporary. It's old meets new. And um, slightly trying out different grinds on the back here at the moment, bud. So, you know, that... You can make that razor sharp, but it's not the this because I know you don't have a bow and arrow, right? So it's not the it's not the spoke shaving grind, right? Um, but oh, oh my! And I found you a decent sheaf as well. There you go. Nice big manly fat belt loop there. That's for Jamesy up in the Highlands. Poor bugger, eh? Eh? Surrounded by sweaties. Oh man, I shouldn't really. I'm going to get in so much trouble. Um, uh, right, um, for myself, I am making another one. Although, um, slightly different grind. And um, I've, been, uh, I've been playing around with bodkin arrows. So, this has got like a penetrator on it. And the tip of this, is, I'll tell you what, it's like a kitten's claw. You touch it and it, it's, I am covered in hundreds of little cuts. Same thing again, that's all in the um, the teardrop pattern. Full tang, teardrop. And I'm going to do this in carbon fibre, but this is going to go right out to the very edge. Maybe. I don't know. I'm going to make it up as I go along. Oh, what I didn't show you on this is... Um, shh. The secret centre laminations. Oh, that's enough said. It's a bit, Nor it's a bit of a Norwegian thing. But it works very well. Now, um, another chap contacted me on my eBay uh, shop. And he's just gone wallet. Right, I have all three of them. <laughs> so, look. I've and a baby one, a mummy one, and a daddy one. But in all seriousness, uh, it's 112 mil, 128 mil, and 153 mil. I had to write it on there, otherwise I forget. And um, all these three... These all have the reverse pole on the back. Of course, the short one has the biggest pole, right? Because, uh, you know, you've got a big old fire arc there, clacking out uh, 12 foot pounds. We need to get rid of our um, pressure from our first chamber. So they're ready to go. Um, then, um, Matt, this is what I had for you in mind, me old darling. Um, this is my... Um, this is my rivet. I, I have a bit of a Victorian fetish. You know, on weekends I like to dress up as Isambard Kingdom Brunel, go around look at boats. Or I go to the um, Royal Artillery Museum dressed as Whitworth, just walk around tutting. <laughs> there is probably a society that does that. Um, this is the um, this is the little skinner that I've got in mind for you. Um, this has a mirror edge blade and a mirror edge uh, bevel. But it has a contrast in Damascus pattern in between the two. It's quite weird. It's like the beach at high or low tide. It's a bit strange. And then uh, we've got a nice outstanding Damascus pattern here. And um, this is not too bad, this one. There you go. <laughs> Actually, look, fuck it up. I won't do that again in a hurry. Yeah, that's nice. I really like this one. And this is... Get right up inside that carcass and cut that skin off. These, that's why people really, really like these. This is why small skinners are better than big ones. Because you don't realise it. You've got to get your hand up inside that carcass. And um, the smaller the blade, the better. Especially if I can keep this, keep my hand away from the edge that I'm cutting, right? Or parting, actually, if you're skinny. Um, not that I do, you know, terrible amount of skinning. Just the odd person now and again, you know. 
Um, this is my slightly longer one, buddy. This is with the camel bone handle. Um, it's a bit like um, it's a bit like ivory, but we're not allowed to say ivory anymore, are we? Yeah. Um, again, I do uh, a lovely mirror edge finish. Well, it's not exactly mirror edge because mirror edge wouldn't last a second on a knife blade, and that is also fairly short. I'm gonna have no fucking ears. Look. This is Alex's fault. A friend of mine, Alex at Fat Bob's. I made him a little workshop knife, fun enough, like you asked for. <clears throat> and, you know, I thought I had it sharp, and I sent it up to him, and then the next day, he sends me back a photo. Notice the single-edge blade there, it, with the radius. He sends me back a photo of his arm with no hairs on, saying, I struck your knife, look what it did. So that's what I had in mind for you. I'll just show you a couple of others that I've got here. Uh, this is the same thing again, but without the rivets. The rivets have been ground out. I like the rivets. I, I like to see a rivet. Um, this one, unfortunately, has got a tiny little crack in the wood on the very back part there. But uh, again, it's it's beautiful. The actual pattern is, is lovely. And then um, I have a conventional. This is olive wood. Actually, it makes a really nice... Uh, Makes a nice bit of wood to make a handle with. It's really, oh yeah, good ass squeeze. Um, girlfriend's tips. Uh, <laughs> this is what I call a subdued pattern. So it's more all silver. Uh, although the Damascus pattern is there, it's just once we've highlighted it with the acid bath, I then take some uh, Scotch Bright and, and we dull it down. What it means is. Um, You'll use this without any fear of scratching it or scratching the pattern. I know it's weird. Um, this also has a contemporary, uh, just a normal cutting edge on the back. Um, and it's very sharp, right in the centre. That's what we call the cricket. I don't know why it's called the cricket, it just is. Um, but that's lovely. That's great for opening boxes because you can open up and down. Sweet! Right, so let's pop them on one side. So we've done silencers, we've done steel, we've done James's new knife. Let me show you my workshop knife. This is where it all started. The uh, thing you'll find with, um, with most knives, uh, you've got a long straight blade and the curve on the end. You'll spend 90% of the time using the curve on the end. So I just made one long gentle curve and an inverted curve on the back. And basically this was used pretty much for box cutting and bits and bobs or when we went to shows it would be cable ties everything I just jam it in the cable tie and twist it and it would slice it straight off that's my first ever sheaf look. and because I'm a gunsmith by trade yes it did come out looking like the holster for a 38 special I know I know and then I'll quickly show you my hunting knife because that's what we were originally talking about this is my one um, the sheath isn't finished yet. Although the knife's 90% there. This is my, um, this is what I call my Wild Bill Hickok knife. It's got a lovely big radius on the back. Which is really good for tannery. Uh, you put your skins over your fire. Fur side down, fat side up. And then you draw this curve over the lever. And it takes all the fat off. It works really well. I've sold quite a few. I've sold one of these to my friend uh, in Norway. He's got a deer herd, so he's quite active, and he absolutely loves it. And he's also he's quite an established knife maker in himself, and he uses my knife. <laughs> uh, this is what we call a winkler. So getting in little bits uh, or doing little jobs that your main blade is too big for. When this is finished, it will sort of sit in the back now like this. Although it will actually be on the back of the sheath now. So I've got the best of both worlds. Uh, that's it. Pretty much coming up for time done. Um, yeah, you lot. Get the fuck out of here. See you later, buddies. Ta-da.